Hello, I'm Mr Burton and today I'm going to be going through positive and normative statements uh, and we're going to look at the differences between the two types of statements. Uh, now these uh, are statements that you cover way back probably in your first week of studying economics but they are crucial in understanding how government policies are created uh, and also it's crucial to use in your evaluation of particular government policies that may be used in certain situations such as tackling pollution or such as uh, reducing inequality for example. Uh, so firstly we'll look at positive statements. Uh, positive statements are objective statements, so they're objective. Um, this means they can be tested and amended and ultimately they can be reje rejected. So you can say that actually a positive statement is either true or false, for example, um, because you can use data and you can use um, figures and facts and you'll be able to actually understand whether somebody's positive statement is actually uh, true or not. Um, we'll look at some examples uh, in a minute. Um, these are all crucially based on evidence. So I'm not just saying uh, an opinion and making a statement that I think is true. For example, uh, I think uh, low-income people should be uh, getting higher benefits. Where's the evidence of that? That's not a positive statement because there's no facts or figures. There's no way I can say whether that's true or false. It's just my opinion. Um, so to be a positive statement, it needs to have some facts and figures. For example, I might say, a reduction in the interest rate in an economy uh, will increase aggregate demand. Because I can look at that, I can say, well, what's the, the evidence for that? I can say, well, let's reduce the interest rate and let's see how aggregate demand changes from that. So that's a positive statement, one that has evidence and figures and facts behind it. Um, so importantly, if you see any statements based on figures or data or historical trends, uh, usually you can start to think maybe that's going to be a positive statement. Um, okay, so let's now have a look at normative statements. During the course of your economics um, study, you'll probably see a lot more normative statements um, because economics isn't just a typical uh, science. It's a social science that looks at consumer behaviour, it looks at um, how people act in society. Uh, so you can't always just make positive statements all the time in economics. A lot of government policy is actually normative. So normative statements are also known as subjective statements. Subjective just means that it's based on uh, opinions. So what is your opinion of something? Um, what's your ideas of maybe how the world is shaped? Um, and also your values, so people's values. So whether you um, are brought up in a particular uh, mindset, for example, you might be brought up in a very um, left-wing household, that means your um, statement of how the world should be is going to be based on um, your values, how you're brought up, what you're in your mindset is um, of, of how the world works. Um, and it all, as I said, it's all based on how you view the world. Fundamentally, many politicians, whether they're Conservative um, or Labour or Lib Dems in the UK or whether you're looking at Democrats and Republicans in America, all of these politicians have their statements about what should happen in terms of government policy and it's usually based on their view of the world. They will tell you that it's based on evidence and some of it might be, generally speaking, it all boils down to what their view of the world is because of their values of society uh, and generally speaking because of their opinions and ideas of how the world should work. Um, so ultimately with normative statements, uh, your personal values will determine whether it's right or wrong. Now, positive statements and normative statements, you may get a multiple choice that just says, is this a positive statement? Or what is the definition of a positive or normative statement? Now remember, positive is just objective, all about facts and figures, normative is all about opinions, etc. But crucially, you'll also see um, positive and normative statements cropping up in your evaluation as well. Here are some examples of normative and positive statements. I've mixed them all up. I'm just going to have a look at each of these uh, very quickly just to see whether we can spot and identify whether it's a positive or a normative statement. If these come up in your exams, for example, you need to recognise whether it's positive or normative in order to understand how to actually focus your arguments. 
Okay, so an increase in interest rates will decrease investment. Well, let's have a look at that one. Well, uh, in this case, we can say that let's increase interest rates and let's see what the effect that would have on investment. And we can see whether it will decrease or increase investment. We can see whether there's a correlation with that. So because we can actually get some figures about that, we can get some evidence for that, and we can prove whether it's gonna be right or wrong um, in any given moment of time, we can say that that is a positive uh, statement right there. Because we can actually prove whether it's right or wrong. Okay, so lower interest rates, similar to the above one, lower interest rates is better for an economy. Well, this one, we're saying um, an increase in interest rates or decrease investment, we can kind of figure that one out. But actually lowering interest rates um, and seeing whether that's better for an economy, well firstly, how do you define uh, better? Uh, what are we looking at? Employment? Are we looking at um, competition, global competitiveness, um, inequality? What are we actually measuring here when we say better? We're not too sure. Um, so this is kind of how your 25 markers will be structured, uh, looking at whether something's better or worse for society, for example. Um, but we don't really know. We have to actually figure out what we're looking at, particularly to understand whether this is kind of right or wrong. Um, so in this case, we won't really be able to get evidence and facts and figures about this um, to answer that question specifically. Um, so lower interest rates being better for an economy, that's just somebody's opinion. Um, free market uh, economist might argue one thing, an interventionist economist might argue another thing, for example. Um, so in this case, uh, that's a normative statement. It's just something you say uh, on a normal day-to-day, -day, it's an opinion. Increasing competition will increase availability of goods. Uh, well, okay, well, let's look at that one. Um, let's say there is one firm in the market providing goods, and then we have now 100 firms because we have increased competition providing lots of goods. Well, clearly, we can see whether that's going to increase the availability of goods or not. Um, already, you, uh, hopefully you can see that it would, because more firms means more goods, so the availability of goods would go up. So we can already start to prove whether that's right or wrong. But crucially, we can see with facts, figures and evidence whether that is going to be right or wrong. So that is a positive statement. It's a statement in which we can prove uh, whether it's correct or not. Okay, a warmer summer will increase ice cream sales. Again, we can have a look at climate and how it's changed over time, and we can see ice cream sales, how they've changed over time. And then we can infer from that um, that a warmer summer, um, for example, may increase ice cream sales or may not. Now, clearly, with pos some positive statements, you can argue, well, is that the cause? But that's not the point. The point is, can we say that a warmer summer will increase ice cream sales if the data shows us that they have a correlation and that they, uh, and in a warmer summer, ice cream sales went up? We can say that we can prove whether it's right or wrong um, using evidence. So it's a positive statement. Now again, crucially, you need to understand that actually there might be other effects which cause ice cream sales to change. But again, this statement, we're seeing whether it's right or wrong, and we can prove it using facts and figures. Okay. Pollution is the most important challenge to tackle. How are we going to find evidence or facts and figures for that one? It's going to be quite difficult, isn't it? That might be um, true in your, uh, the way you view the world. You might say pollution is terrible, it needs to be stopped. But that's just an opinion on your values of, of the world. A, right-wing free market economist might say look leave the markets be uh, they'll sort out pollution it's not the most important thing to tackle at the moment the most important thing to tackle is all the regulation in the markets so they would have a different opinion um, so this is just an opinion not based on facts and figures uh, and so that would be a normative statement lastly monopoly firms are detrimental to society again you can kind of start to see already that this is a bit of a vague statement. It's not really saying this is a figure and I can prove it yes or no. Monopoly firms might be great for society if they mean that everyone can afford to have um, electricity or water uh, if the costs are too high for lots of firms to get involved in that. So monopoly firms might be great for society. Lots of profits might improve investment, all those kind of things. But it might also be bad for society because of high prices and low uh, quantity of goods. 
So it depends on what your opinion of the world is and what you value. The main thing to take away from positive and normative statements is not just to know what one means and what another means, but it's also to actually understand how normative statements, the normative ones, are the ones that dominate that dominate uh, political and economic debates. Lots of um, different political parties, different government policies will be purely based on your values and ideas of the world. So you need to uh, look at these statements and say, well, does it depend on how I actually view the world? If I'm arguing a point in my essay, do I need to say this really depends on whether you're a free market economist or an interventionist, uh, or whether you are um, more on the right wing spectrum of economics or on the left wing spectrum. If you get questions in your exam, such as should the government spend more on healthcare, um, should markets be made more competitive, um, should pollution be limited or evaluate um, the view that pollution should be uh, tackled by various government policies or assess the viewpoint that income inequality is worse for everyone in society, all of those questions and the majority of the questions you will get will be based on a normative view of the world. And you will have to try and gather um, evidence and viewpoints on both sides and, and form a final conclusion or judgment at the end based on that. The social environment is too complex uh, to be right or wrong. Economics is a social science. It's not based on facts and figures all the time. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. But as long as you can recognise that, then that'll be absolutely fine um, for getting the higher marks in your exams. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe below and comment for any other topics you want me to cover in my next videos.